Welcome to 101. I'm Greg Bassett, your host from the Salisbury Independent Newspaper. It's a big day here at PAC 14. It's an emotional day because our friend Marty Neat is in the house. Welcome, sir. Hi, how you doing there, Greg? So, Marty, you're the president of our local bank, First Shore Federal, and you just announced you're retiring, and people are very upset about this, but you seem nah. to be pretty happy about it. No, nah, I, I, you know, there's, it's not, you know, it's time. It's, it's the right time, and, and uh, you know, I can't say that I'm thrilled to be doing it, but, uh, you know, I know deep in my heart it's the right time to do it. You've been so instrumental in so many nonprofits in the community. You've been on pretty much every board. Uh, you've given your time. You've been the guy who really uh, is the epitome of leadership in terms of community spirit. Talk to me about this. Why are you wrapped this way? Uh, well, you know, I'm just fortunate to work for an institution that really does care for the community. We're a local bank, and, and we, we stress that, that, that we need to be part of the community. It just happens to be something that I enjoy doing and uh, have been thrilled over the years to be involved. Someone said to me recently that Marty knows how to do fundraising. He knows how to raise money. Is there some talent to that? Did you always have this? Did you learn this? I'm, I'm not sure that there's any any particular talent to it. I think it comes with practice, maybe. It's being involved, and, and uh, uh, I'm not the best person in the world asking somebody to give, but I'm pretty good at asking somebody else to ask somebody to give, you know? So, so uh, you know, uh, I think you do tend to see the same faces involved in community fundraising, so part of that is just being part of the team, so to speak. Somebody said when your friend Norm Conway retired that you could stand in the center of Salisbury and in every direction you looked, you could see something that was there because Norm helped get it to be there, whatever it was. And I think the same thing applies to you in terms of raising money for these groups. When I walk around, when I'm at the Salisbury Zoo, I, I think of the exhibits that you helped fundraise, um, all the different groups, the work you did at the YMCA. Um, just everywhere I look that I think of, Marty Need has had a role in this stuff. Well, I'm honored to, to hear that. It's not something that I've given a whole lot of thought to, to be frank with you. Uh, you know, it's just been a privilege to be involved in so many good organizations. I mean, I think the thing about Salisbury that is just so appealing is, is that every nonprofit that you can think of has an organization here or an office here and certainly has volunteers here. So. There's just so many uh, good causes that you know to be uh, that need to support, and frankly, our community rises up more often than not and does support them. And uh, I think we can all be very proud of that. Do you have a favorite? I think of when I think of you, I think of the zoo first. I don't know why, um, but because I, I saw how much work you did to help the zoo at critical junctures. Do you have any favorites of the ones that you've tried to help along the way? Uh, you know, I, there's, there's plenty of the organizations that I love. I mean, I have to admit deep down, I'm probably the most proud of the involvement in the Community Foundation and the Purdue Kresge campaign and, and uh, uh, you know, the impact that that had back when it happened in 2001 and during that time period, but also even to this day is still having it. Uh, you know, the zoo's, the zoo's fabulous, the YMCA, you've got to be so proud of what they've done over there. You know, Salisbury Neighborhood Housing Service is something that I helped to be involved in to start, and I'm still involved on the board there, of course, the United Way. So there's a, there's a lot of them, you know, it's been, it's certainly something that I'm proud to have been involved with. And you've also ended up being a role model for other executives in town to remind them that they can get involved in these things and get their businesses involved, and it's only going to enhance everything that they do. Well, I, I appreciate you saying that, but I'm by no means the first uh, in that regard. I When I came to Salisbury in 1983, the thing that I fell in love with Salisbury about was that it seemed like so much of the business community was so active and so many help in so many organizations. And, uh, you know, you look back on, you know, the Dick Hazels and the uh, Dick Hensons and Frank Perdue's and, Frank, and Dave Rogers and Frank Morris and, you know, you just go down the line and this community has been blessed with great leadership in the business community for much longer than I've been involved. Frankly, I just saw that it was okay to do that and uh, it happened to correspond with something that I, you know, happen to enjoy and feel is very important. Now, I, I'm guilty on this show a lot of making things about me, but you and I actually kind of came in together in this town. Yeah. 
We did. We we absolutely <laughs> did. In fact, uh, you know, we talked about it uh, uh, several times. But it's uh, uh, you did my first interview when I came to Ocean City in 1979. Uh, you you did my first interview. I was going to work for Mayor Kelly then, and and uh, uh, so you know things have changed a little bit over then uh, since then. But uh, you had shoulder length hair, as I yeah, remember. Yeah, I had shoulder length, <laughs> length hair, and, and I made up for it with a lot less uh, around the gut. You know, uh, the uh, yeah, the, the days have been tough. Uh, you know. Uh, but what an honor for me to basically start my career as an intern at the Daily Times, uh, interviewing you, and now I get to interview you. When it's over for you, basically, yeah, yeah. professionally at least. Yeah, how's that make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm only six or seven years younger than you, yeah, so yeah, I, I yeah. think so I'm about done time. too. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 believe me, the time goes by. There's no question about that, and it, it is ironic that, that, uh, that that's happened. Uh, We've asked this question before, but you came from Western Maryland, um, you went to... Uh, uh, the Ocean college. Yeah. The, yeah, okay. Frostburg. Yeah. Frostburg, Frostburg State, State University, you were there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you worked for the city of Frostburg for a year after graduation, and then you found your way to Ocean City. And basically, you never left. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. I guess when I went to Ocean City, somebody made the comment about getting sand in your sh uh, shoes. And, and uh, I, I, you know, when I came down, I, you know, I can't say I expected to, to end up on the eastern shore for this length of time. But there's no question I, you know, I fell in love with it, and uh, and and so much of that has to do with having moved to Salisbury and really seeing the kind of community we have here, and and uh, uh, wanting to be part of it. Well, and it just it amazes me that you end up coming from Frostburg. You're in Ocean City. Um, you know, the, the Ocean City then with Harry Kelly as the mayor, mm -hmm. and that yeah. that city yeah. council with Hale Harrison and those guys. I mean, there was. A uh, lot, of, lot of weird yeah. stuff going on that you best, had to... Best show in town <laughs> on Monday night. Right, people wouldn't watch yeah. Monday Night Football. They'd yeah. go to the yeah. council before Monday yeah. Night Football because it was yeah. so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you, you survived in that environment, and then you went into, into politics working for Roy Dyson, our congressman, who was a Democrat by by no means a liberal Democrat. No, he was no, a no, very no. conservative Democrat for our, our district, and you worked for Roy Dyson for a long time. Yeah, I did. I worked for uh, Roy for four years. And, uh, and of course, that's, you know, my, my involvement uh, uh, sort of moved from there with, with Dave Rogers, who was very active in the community and the CEO then at First Shore. And he, uh, uh, he, he was very involved in political things also. And, you know, he and I started running into each other, it seemed. And, and that's when the discussion started about me going to First Shore. Uh, the, uh, I, you know, I probably in those days expected that my career would take me to Washington or uh, something. And, and, you know, frankly, the opportunity was given, but uh, at that point of my life, it was time to settle down and, you know, get a real job. Yeah, and you were with Roy during a, a, a series of uh, turmoil there in his yeah. office and with his life. Well, you know, and actually, my my days with Dyson were just prior to that. Okay, I left. I left right before a lot of that started. You, you got out just in time. I got out just in time, exactly. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, yeah, my timing was impeccable in that regard. Uh, the, uh, uh, yeah, I was I was disappointed, obviously, in the way that went because I think think quite frankly, although although politically. Uh, Roy, being a Democrat, may have had a tough time holding that seat for a long time. Uh, you know, quite honestly, he was young enough that I think he could have he could have done something important. Uh, and uh, it, it was too bad that some of the issues that arose later uh, occurred because, uh, uh, you know, the, I mean, he actually voted for things like Graham Latta and so forth, which were Reagan-esque yeah. legislation and and. Uh, so, you know, he, he was pretty much in step with this district, I think. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and back then the district was designed correctly, I think. He was from Southern Maryland, but before gerrymandering, I yeah. know that didn't just get invented, but, but back then, you know, Southern Maryland, those counties were a lot like the Eastern Shore counties in Absolutely. terms of being rural, watermen, farmers. So there was a, a commonality in terms of the economy, and all that's gone now. I really yeah. miss that. Yeah, well, I don't think there's any question that the gerrymandering has been negative in that regard. I, there's no doubt in my mind that Southern Maryland and the Eastern Shore belong together. Yeah. And, of course, the numbers got to add up. But, but in this case, it did. Uh, it certainly was a nice fit, and it, it was a it was a uh, fit that suited Roy, certainly, because being from Southern Maryland, having family here on the Eastern Shore in Salisbury, you know, politically it was a nice, uh, a nice setup. 
Yeah. Now, you were um, involved in the Salisbury JCs here. Um, you were the JC of the year, and that's where Dave Rogers first, perhaps first saw you or thought that you might be someone who might want to work at the bank. I mean, there's a, there, that's, that's very true. It, it, was, uh, it was actually an award called the Distinguished Service Award that uh, I received, and, and Dave was the keynote speaker. And, uh, uh, you know, and of course, after they introduced me, uh, then, you know, Dave came over to me and, and uh, said, you know, hey, if you ever decide you want to do something else, let me know. And, uh, I mean, I was somewhat shocked uh, at the time, and, but, uh, but quite frankly, I, I, it's interesting that I, I first, when I first started in, for the city of uh, Frostburg after I got out of college, the mayor at that time was uh, a fellow by the name of Dave Lynn who was a banker. And, uh, and I remember being so impressed with uh, Marilyn and with him. He was a great guy and, and uh, wondering at that point if banking was a career that would be, you know, uh, worth pursuing too. And uh, uh, so it wasn't totally without, uh, uh, without having thought about it, but it was interesting to have uh, Dave uh, approach me about it. And, and at that point, my wife and well, my soon-to-be wife and I were planning to get married and so forth. So it did seem like a good time to settle down. And and uh, since she was a Republican working for Roy <laughs> Dyson, the Democrat, didn't seem like a good idea. Just joking there, but uh, uh, you know. It, it, uh, and she's uh, a terrific person, yeah, and we yeah, all love her yeah, so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you've got the banker. You know, people think of bankers as uh, yes/no guys. Uh, but you have you bring a personality to it. You it seems like people want to come to you if they need money or they need business help. That you have a sense of what's going on in the business community. Um, you know what'll work and not work. You 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 know who is worth taking a risk on, even if the numbers aren't exactly there. You do things beyond that in terms of risk levels. Um, yet at, at the same time, as a conservative bank, it you know has never got caught in the savings and loan scandals or the yeah. the problems with, with 2008. Um, was your personality already there? Did you apply your personality to the banking job, or did it change you as how, in terms of how you are based on your profession? Uh, I, I'm honestly not sure, uh, Greg, what the answer to that would be. I, I will say this, is that because of the type of institution we are, local institution, we take a lot of pride in, in looking at the whole picture as opposed to looking at the cookie cutter of, hey, this is a good loan or not. Now, we don't make every loan application that we see by any means. It's, as you said, we're conservative because we don't sell our loans. When we make a loan, we're, we're in it for life, so to speak. And uh, so when we make a mistake, it's not someone else's mistake, it's our, our mistake. On the other hand, niche, what we call niche loans, uh, you know, or exception loans, are a, a very good product for us. And so we do make a, a lot of exceptions because somebody may have a few uh, glitches in their, on their financial statement, but they also have a lot of pluses. And uh, I think you've got to look at the whole picture and say, okay, is this a good risk or not? Uh, ironically, a couple of the loans that have turned out bad for us over the years were, you know, were darn good loans to when we started. I, right. I never forget one that we that uh, we made, and this was a couple hundred thousand dollars, but it was uh, when we made it, the individual had an 810 credit score, which is about as good as it gets, you know, a loan to value of, of like 70%, so there's no real uh, uh, risk there, and, and uh, 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 an excellent business. Well, you know, fast forward seven years, and they lost their business, their marriage broke up, and, and their credit was abysmal, and they went bankrupt. And so you can't, you don't know what the future will hold for somebody, but, you know, but you do the best you can, and, and uh, you know, you don't take unnecessary risk, but I think we're in the business to take some risk. And I apologize for that. I'm hoping to pay you all back someday. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, this interview is worth it. You know, you, you know, we'll, we'll credit it toward it. Well, you know, when yeah, I did my yeah, business plan yeah, to start the yeah. Salisbury Independent, I dropped it, dropped it with you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was trying to raise money, and I was going to maybe come to you at the end if, if I wasn't able to raise money publicly. And then I made a deal with, with the guys in Delaware. But I remember at one point you said, do we need to talk about this thing, or are you okay? And I was like, I was okay. But you, you were going to entertain me, and oh. you'd, you'd obviously looked at my business plan. Yeah. And that really helped me that, you know, Marty didn't call right away and go, put this thing in the trash. You yeah. know, this isn't going to work. 
Greg, I, I, once again, you know, you're talking about a local business. A lo, uh, you know, the, the, the Independent has been, I think, a great success story for our community. And I, you know, and I, I, I think you should be very proud of it. And, and, and I think it's so important for the community to have that kind of community newspaper. So, so yeah, we'd have, been, we'd have been proud to have uh, uh, tried to help there. You and know. we appreciate you being an advertiser. Yeah, so, yeah well, so that's, thank you. you know. You I'm know. hoping that will continue after you retire. I, I you know, you, you, you'll need to talk to the folks in charge down there then but, but uh, uh, the, uh, I, I don't I don't think you'll see any major changes I really don't most executives I interview they, they, they love to take credit for everything but every time I talk to you you want to give credit to the people below you who work in the trenches and you also love to compliment your board uh, how could I not uh, you know I mean you know our board is just absolutely an outstanding group of people uh, many of them are, you know, have been involved in the, the, in this community and, and the Eastern Shore even longer than I have. Our staff are the people that get things done. Uh, you know, I'm blessed with a, a a group of a team there that that is just outstanding. I mean, I'll I'll make some comments. Uh, you know that. Uh, you know, if you think about it, we've got Gene Malone, who's chairman of the Board of Education. We've got Oliver Waters, who's chairman of Habitat. We've got Jim Jones, who's chairman of the Community Foundation. We've got uh, Nestor Bleach, who's chairman of Salisbury Neighborhood Housing Service. We've got Sharon Morris, who does everything in this community. You know, Diane Turner's very involved. Cheryl Young's very Diane's going to be your successor. Diane's going to be my successor, and she'll do an outstanding job. I mean, she'll she'll do an outstanding job, and and. Uh, uh, you know, they're all people that care. And, and Cheryl Young, very involved with the zoo. Um, absolutely. Cheryl's, Cheryl's become a, a big part of the zoo's uh, organization. And, and uh, you know, and these are all senior officers. I mean, all vice presidents or, or assistant VPs. And, and uh, you know, so they're all leaders in, at first shore. And, you know, when you see that kind of involvement across the board, it, you know, it, it says to everybody, hey, we want to do something worthwhile. Has Salisbury evolved the way you kind of thought it would, or is it running behind where it should be? You know, a lot of us think that Salisbury should be bigger and better than it is now, but it's getting there. I think it's getting there. I, I mean, when I came to, when I fell in love with Salisbury in the 1980s, I thought it was a progressive community that had a, you know, a lot of things going for it. I, I, I feel that way very much now. I mean, I think there were some periods of time when we let some some things get to us a little bit, and and uh, maybe wasn't quite the community that we would hope it would be. But I I'm very impressed with what's happening now in Salisbury in so many ways. I know you've been concerned about the city council. You you were a big advocate for uh, uh, for Duke Shanahan being the mayor oh, yeah, at one time. Yeah, I remember we yeah, had some right. conflict over that. That's true. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it was close. The election was close. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, the newspaper yeah, kind of torpedoed yeah, him, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it didn't help. It didn't help. You know, we stepped in it, and, and uh, that's the key. Yeah, he yeah, stepped yeah, in it, yeah, so it's yeah, not us. Yeah. If you step in it, well, we're going to write about the poop well, on your shoe. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I can't, I can't argue. It was. Uh, it, 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 you could take. You could have interpreted that issue two ways, and you interpreted it one way, and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> like that you did, <laughs> the, uh, yeah. No, and I, the, you know. Well, that was a, that was one situation. I will say, I will say, Duke Shanahan's a top quality. What a great guy! guy yeah, and what a great yeah. guy. And I think he would have done a wonderful job. But things happened for a reason. He moved to Anacock, and uh, you know, life went on. Uh, the uh, uh, I, I think that was one of the first campaigns that I'd ever been involved in that we lost. And so it was, uh, you know, <laughs> I didn't like it either. <laughs> now, yeah. I always thought that you would have a political future. I thought you would, you know, not necessarily be mayor, but that you'd be a congressman or be someone in the, in the state house. That never happened for you. You know, I it didn't. And, and I don't regret that one bit. I, I mean, I think I found the way I could serve best and what I've done and, and what I hope to continue to do. Uh, the, uh, uh, I did certainly when I was working in Dyson's office, I saw some possibility that I would be interested in doing that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it, ironically, uh, the chief of staff or uh, Roy Dyson, uh, you know, knew that I had some interest there. He made the comment to me at one point that uh, it was much easier to say nice things about other people than to say them about yourself. Right. And, uh, 
that may have been the most insightful thing that he said to me because it's uh, I think there is a you know there's a lot of truth in that so, right uh, yeah so so I you know the political stuff is and you know the nastiness of politics today is something that is not very appealing either you know I mean there was a time that that you know you could you could disagree with people and debate it debate it and have a good healthy debate and not necessarily dislike each other well you know that those days uh, are not not as prevalent today i just feel like so many of our politicians aren't smart about people or smart about the world or even smart enough about how the the government works the di the dynamics of all of it you know you, you know you know it, I, I mean there is a there is a, an issue there that, that you don't have to be so divided people are not necessarily this or this most people i am convinced are in the middle and so you can you can work things out you know and unfortunately i think in too many cases today you know the two extremes are are you know uh running things and and uh, you know and and it's not it's just not an environment that you like to see uh and i don't think a very productive one uh the uh, you don't always have to have a winner and a loser you know yeah um, i i talk to our mutual friend dr ray hoy about this all the time mm -hmm. that you know i say to him you need to do a better job teaching um people in school how government works and what you know how what the constitution is because People make these great opinion statements that have no base, basis on what yeah. is reality. Yeah. Uh, and I know he's sort of up against it in terms of trying to educate people, things that maybe they should have learned in high school civics or whatever. Um, but since you're so involved in Warwick, and just talk to me about how important Warwick has been to the community and how you saw that as something that we really needed to enhance. Well, there's, there's no question. I, I mean, I think it's a, a, just a, a, a major and massive resource for our community. Uh, you know, 90% of its graduates, of its students stay here. You know, it was interesting, uh, the, I was talking to an, another person who had been an adjunct professor at a local, at another institution, and, and, and as was I for a period of time, and we, you know, we said, well, how many of your students do you remember that live here? And quite honestly, she could think of two, and I could think of four, you know. So, uh, you know, the fact is, is that Warwick, you know, is a great local institution that, that uh, provides a first-class training as well as education for folks. And, and uh, you know, I think we're just very fortunate to have it here. Of course, we're in the middle of the uh, 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 campaign for tomorrow, you know, and, and uh, uh, it's... Uh, it's going very well, and you know, Dr. Hoy, of course, is just such an outstanding leader that uh, uh, you know that doesn't surprise me one bit that it would would be going well. Yeah, that's that's incredible. Can we talk about baseball a little bit? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, uh, everyone knows you love baseball. Yeah. yeah. Why do you love baseball? Uh, you know, I'm I'm honestly not sure. I I mean, I I'm, it goes way back to to being a kid and remembering. You know, my my stepfather, who I really idolized. Uh, uh, was a big baseball fan, and I think he got me into it. Uh, uh, but we were all, we grew up playing baseball. We, every night at 6 o'clock, you could be sure the local, you know, the neighborhood kids were getting together and playing ball. Of course, I was, you know, believe it or not, the small guy in the neighborhood, you know, the youngster. So, you know, I always got to, uh, uh, you know, carry the bat or whatever. But, uh, uh, but so we, you know, we were just fans from that day on. And, and uh, uh, the... Uh, and, and then, of course, the, we evolved when I got down here, you know, the, the, the whole idea of hitting all the stadiums and so forth sort of evolved. Uh, and that was just, a, you know, we did over a 20-year period. Uh, four of us, primarily four of us, were involved in going to every Major League Baseball stadium. And, you know, and the, those junkets turned out to be a lot of fun and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, certainly something that, that I, I get a lot of comments, obviously, about it. You know, a lot of, a lot of people uh, uh, enjoy that it could happen. Well, it's very intriguing. I remember we wrote about it years ago. Yeah, we, yeah. But what was so funny about it was you would get it completed, and then they would build a new stadium somewhere, and you had to go back out. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we've, we've actually, we, we talk about completing our tour of the stadiums. We've done that four times now, you know, uh, you know, because we had to go back to when they built the new New York stadiums. We had to go back to New York. They built the new one in San Diego. We had to go back to San Diego. 
thank you. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, they built a new one in, in Milwaukee, a, a new one in uh, Minnesota, uh, Atlanta. You know, so we've had to go back to some of these communities. We still, we technically haven't completed the tour now because they have a new one in Texas that we haven't been to. So that's on the agenda for uh, for next year, we think, because if the, you know, the season is in, 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 interrupted by the labor uh, issues. Yeah. What's your favorite stadium? Uh, well, I'm a, I'm a hometown boy, so Camden Yards is. Really, still? Yeah, it, it really is. Uh, I, I will say this. You know, a surprisingly cool stadium is Pittsburgh. Yeah. I mean, Pittsburgh's really a nice stadium. Uh, it's you a know, great complex there yeah. with the other stadium and the bridge and the view. It's, oh, yeah. It's, it's very great. nice yeah. there. Yeah. 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 You know, I love Wrigley, Wrigley Field. Uh, you know, uh, of course, I tend to... Uh, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I tend to grade stadiums by how the quality of the bars outside of the stadium. <laughs> and uh, Wrigley, Wrigley is first class for that. Uh, but uh, Fenway's uh, good for that too. There's Fen a lot. Fen Fenway's yeah. good for that, but you'd have to be a Boston fan, right? And, you know, I'm, Jid, I'm not wired that way. For you know, you can't be an Oriole fan and a Boston fan too. Yeah, they are annoying. Why are they so annoying? Why are the Boston Yankee fans so annoying? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but they sure are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like when I go to the Ravens games, the Ravens fans annoy me. But and I just well, that's I, because you have a San Diego. You, well, you yeah, know, I'm a you know, I'm a Charger you know, fan. Yeah, yeah. But but they annoy me. But then when I'm at the baseball game, I'm sitting with the same people and we're rooting for the same team, and I like them just fine. Yeah. So I don't know what, what why there's a difference. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, you know, I, uh, uh, I I've never been to the Ravens stadium, ironically. So I wow. haven't been. You know, uh, the. Uh, I, I, the last year that the Colts were in Baltimore, I had season tickets to, and we went uh, went there, and and uh, uh, I was held up at gunpoint after a game. <laughs> oh no! So so, no. so that sort of took the edge <laughs> off of going to football games a little bit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It actually got me out of jury duty one time, though. <laughs> you know, I, I I was serving on a jury uh, uh, locally in the in the. Uh, uh, Bellif said, "Would uh, the next case involves uh, an assault with a deadly weapon? Would anybody who's been involved in an assault with a deadly weapon please raise your hand?" And I was in the jury pool, so I raised my hand, and the judge looked at me and said, "Okay, let's hear your story." I said, "You know, I was held up at gunpoint after a ball uh, after a football game in Baltimore," and the defense attorney looked at me and says, "Yeah, and like who hasn't been?" <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I miss that old Memorial Stadium. My father yeah. had seats up in '34, and we used to go um, every weather, every condition, and yeah. those those were the days. Yeah, they that's really where were. we. That's that's where we were. Yeah. Well, as this airs uh, tonight, there's a big event for you at the Civic Center. Um, some of your closest friends will be there to say goodbye to Marty. Now, whenever I interview anyone who's retiring, they always say, "Oh no, I'm not going anywhere." But then I never I never see or hear from them again. What's my future going to be with Marty Neat? Uh, I'll be here. I'm, okay. I'm not going anywhere. I'm really not. I, I, I think the only difference will be I, I won't be going into the office at First Shore Federal, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, uh, but I don't expect uh, the future to change a whole heck of a lot. Has it been a good career? Uh, it's been, been a terrific, uh, a great organization. I love it dearly, and, uh, you know, I could not have asked for more. He's Marty Neat. We love him. He's a fan of the Salisbury Independent, which we really appreciate. He's a friend of Pac-14, which we also appreciate. He's a friend to our community. We can't thank him enough for everything. Marty, thanks so much for coming in. My pleasure. My pleasure. I'm Greg Bassett from the Salisbury Independent newspaper. Another edition of One on One right here on Pac-14. First Shore Federal is proud to support PAC-14 and one-on-one. -on -one. 
we'd encourage every business to support PAC-14 and, and pick a program and support it and let's make a difference.